everybody, Donna Woods with Photonic Health and this edition of Health Made Simple. Our special guest is Miss Lydia Hibby. Miss Lydia is um, not only a avid animal lover, horse lady herself, fabulous woman, but she also has been talking to animals, communicating with animals for over 40 years. And she is, we, we actually met her in a hot springs. <laughs> and, um, and that was like right when we were starting our journey into horsemanship and, and literally had just started learning about um, animal communication and energy and things like that. And so when we met you um we were just completely blown away because you chatted with one of our horses as if he was sitting like right there with us and you're so incredibly accurate and we've just been raving fans of yours ever since so welcome to the show yes and thank you for having me back and it was my 40th anniversary two weeks ago of doing this work that's kind of mind-blowing <laughs> <laughs> oh, where where does time go right congratulations thank you congratulations. <laughs> i said it's only through the grace of god i keep saying you can't take a day off jesus because i need i need the help <laughs> i don't do this by myself <laughs> so let's go ahead and dive in because you know i mean brian and i are firm believers in energy work we're also firm believers in um, communicating with animals, like they're always chatting with us, or most of them are always chatting with us. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of people that are skeptics. And mm -hmm. so, um, like, what do you, what do you, like, how do you overcome people that are skeptical? Oh, that's a great question. First off, this is me on the cover of the book. And so all kids are able to do this. And I forgot totally about this picture. And when I said to my dad, when we were going to use it for the cover of the book, I said, did you not think your daughter could have been a pirate. And he's like, I, the two things didn't go together for him. No. I said, geese are not that friendly. In fact, they're downright nasty, unfortunately. And that's who they are. And I was right. that close. And he said, well, you look like you were having a conversation. I said, okay, I'll shut up now. You know, so, so I had forgotten right. I did it as a child. Every, everybody's born with this. This is that nagging feeling like something's wrong, but I don't know. And now in the world that we live of technology, instead of getting a letter, when you think of somebody or a phone call, you get a text and you're like, God, it was so weird. I was just thinking about you. So it's all about frequency and being connected. And as you said so well, animals primarily do it through pictures. So they'll flash an image or give a sensation. But depending upon the soul level of each animal, whether it's horses, dogs, cats, birds, whatever, it can be even more intricate than that. And so, uh, so I was blessed that my mom never squashed that. Then I went to school and the teachers were not like very happy that I said that. So I forgot it. And then I really went to school to be a veterinarian technician. Those are the people that wrestle your animal to the table. And the animals complain to me like, oh, you're one of those people that did terrible things to me, like clean my ears and trim my nails and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's where I thought I was going to stay. And I'm a former New Yorker. So if anybody who's skeptical, you talk to us because you got to prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt. So then I ended up working at a show barn in New Jersey years ago, and it was like 45 horses. We went to the Olympics, uh, you, you know, it was a big time show barn. It wasn't like a very small place. And the owner was fascinated by my mentor, Beatrice Lidecker, who was like one of the OGs of the animal communication world years back. And they kept saying, this woman's coming to talk to the animals. And I was a New Yorker going, yeah, whatever. Because <laughs> I forgot I did it as a child. And they're like, right. yeah, yeah, she's coming on such and such a date. Okay, well, the day arrives and all these people start showing up. And I had to go to the vet hospital in the morning, do my thing. By the time I came back in the afternoon, I thought, what are they? filming a 48 hours episode or something because all these cars had shown up because word had gotten out. And so as I came down the hallway, there were all these people, you know, huddled around her and they were going, oh yeah, that's right. And I totally didn't have time to watch it the first day, to be honest, Don. I was like, okay, whatever. So we right. also, because we we're in New Jersey, we had a big indoor covered arena so that people could ride year round and huge bay windows and the stairs going upstairs to where I lived was right there. So I would go in and out, up and down and let my dogs out and all that kind of stuff. And finally, I look into the arena and she traveled with eight to 10 German Shepherds at a time. And so they were loose, having a good time. And I, out of the corner of my eye, I look back and all of a sudden the dogs were going like this. And I was like, what are they looking at? And I look in the window and one of the barn cats made the fatal mistake. And the, it was like a Halloween cat, like, oh, oh, I am in so in the wrong place. 
So I just pushed open the door. Here's these eight dogs that are loose. And I said, that's not very nice. And I picked up the cat like this and walked out back into the office. And my trainer's like, what were you thinking? And I said, I don't know. I just went and helped the cat. Didn't think anything else of it. So right. I go back and go about my day. By the end of the two days, Beer just kept like seeking me out. And I'm thinking, oh, now she's probably pissed. She wants to yell at me. And I just kind of avoided her. You know, like she kept saying, I want to talk to you. I'm like, mm, OK. So finally, at the end of the day, she said, I really want to talk to you. And I thought, OK, I, I just said, look, I apologize if I did anything to upset your dog. And she goes, oh, no, that could be further from the truth. She said, I wanted to find out why you thought you could go in with my dogs. And I said, I didn't really think about it. It was probably not the smartest idea. And right. she said, well, I've talked to all the horses that you're taking care of. And I had what we kind of, they come, to, um, the owner called the Looney Tune horses, the ones that had a lot of problems. And I just always put myself in the animal's position thinking, how would I feel if someone was doing something to me that I didn't like? And, you know, right. we, uh, we don't kind of think of horses in that parameters because we're in and out of their bedroom. And as you get into more natural horsemanship, like with Pat and John Lyons and everybody, now people are having a bigger awareness, but I always kind of had that feeling and always put myself in their place. And so that's why she went to talk to me. And she said, well, can I prove this to you? Are any of these animals on the property yours? And I said, no. And the night before my mom had come and picked up my dog. So I didn't personally have any animals on the property. So she said, well, do you have a picture? I'm like, what? She goes, yeah, don't you have a photograph of your dog? And I said, yeah, upstairs. And she goes, go get it. So I'm walking up the stairs going, oh, this is going to be interesting because I want to trial by fire, right? So she come, I come down the stairs, I hand her the photograph and she laid me out. She knew the inside of my mom's house, the relationship of the dog with my brother, you know, other dogs that I played with, all this kind of stuff, unbelievable. And so because of that, I was just like, I'm sure by that point, flies were going in and out of my mouth because I was just flabbergasted. And she said, here's my car. And if you're interested in learning, I got to go now. And she drove out the driveway and I mm -hmm. called my mother and I said, what is happening? And she said, don't you remember? And I said, no, you know, she took me on nature walk. So that's really how it got started. So I had her come to New York to teach the class, which I now teach on Zoom platform, which is so amazing. Right. Um, I've been, and I do master class now, which is kind of fun. And the long and the short of it is I wanted to learn because one of my jobs as a, was a vet tech was an x-ray technician. And I didn't want the animals to have to be continually anesthetized every week to take a darn x-ray it's basically a picture right so finally she just got so busy and you know she was on all these tv shows and she finally said you have to help me so you know grudgingly god pulled me into this but as i look back now i worked at the very first cat hospital in new york city in the 80s so i know all about kitty cats i have had my history with horses which i love um, gone on dolphin swims uh, worked at the first holistic clinic in burbank and that's not to impress anybody but i you know when you have that hindsight now and for right. you and, and Brian as well you're like okay here are the puzzle pieces so now yeah. that hopefully the puzzle comes together and one yeah. of the things I really feel blessed about is a lot of veterinarians refer me because I really appreciate that I only went to school to be a vet tech for two years you know I know enough Right. But I also keep up with things. But the fact that and, and and on Thursday and Friday mornings I have blocks of hours with vets and we go over their cases because they're stumped and I'm right. like, wow. So so that's the long and the short of it. Hopefully that's concise, but that's in a nutshell. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. There's so there's so much there. Like there's so much there. And and like you said, it's it's a cumulatory thing. Like we started, you know, we started this journey like since we were born, essentially. Mm -hmm. And a lot of stuff, you know, like we forget or it's been tried to be deprogrammed or unprogrammed and then you know it's sort of like this whole it, you know it's that spiral that they talk about right um you know like you start out and you're open and you are communicating with things and we've had lots of stories with that as well um and interacting with children that can see stuff and it's just they're incredible they're incredible mm -hmm. and um and you know like as we get into adulthood and learning to become adults we sort of forget that that ability i'm not going to call it a gift mm -hmm. that ability mm -hmm. um and it's so cool that like you found it again so early on in your career and that you've been doing this now for 40 years. And the amazing, the amazing thing is people go, oh, animal communication. 
<laughs> well, it's not as odd now as it was years ago. My dad Who, used to say, I get this look when I tell people what you do. And I'm like, well, then don't tell them. But <laughs> Correct. Correct. But I love the point that you talked about the veterinarians, like you work with the veterinarians on their cases, um, because it's so valid. Mm. And I think because we're taught or there's a misperception that a doctor or a veterinarian knows everything and will fix everything. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of pressure on one person. Yeah. And the fact of the matter burnout. is mm -hmm. they're not, and right. they don't. Right. 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 Do they have a much higher skill set and a much higher education level than us mm -hmm. in different things? Yes. Absolute, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do they know everything and anything get, that can fix your animal? Yeah. No. Absolutely not. Yeah. They learn on each animal that they work on, just like you do with your torch. And, and so exactly. it's been so amazing. So I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's great because, you know, we, you know, the more animals you have, the more opportunity they give you to learn. And so we have had several animals where we have gone through a whole host of practitioners, uh, vets, body workers, acupuncturists, and the only way we were really able to get to the root cause of the problem was through you animal oh. communication Thank like you. it's like you know so that. i've i've sort of just gone okay i'm I, like one of my first calls now is okay let's talk to lydia <laughs> let's you know we've got a couple other people that do animal communication as well and mm -hmm. i you know i know and you're you're so busy you're so busy um so we you know we're like okay who can help us solve this puzzle and get to get get to having relief with the animal faster so Mm -hmm. Is our health issues one of the main things that people want to chat with you about? Yes, I think so. Animals? I think because of my background, yes. It goes everything from, I didn't even know this was possible and it's fun. Those are great. I love doing those to those real detailed problems, just like you brought up so eloquently, like, oh, we've tried this, this, and this. I had two of those calls yesterday. They had tried everything. And finally, one of the vets said, I don't know, call a communicator. And she goes, okay. And she started Googling and she found me, you know, and I even said to her, and I say to this to every person, I am not a vet. I give them my disclaimer and they're like, yeah, yeah, we got that. We saw the videos just whatever you get and it's, it's whatever tough. i get in that moment you know right. and it's a snapshot for that day and so that's always interesting too and i learn something every single day i'm sure you both do i mean it just <sighs> blows my mind the stuff that comes up and i think as we go down the path and i read somewhere once like the more that you know the more you realize you don't know. don't know yeah mm -hmm. and not so, to be frustrated by that you know right not to be frustrated Right. And um, so, yeah, I'm at the point where I go, OK, all right. I, what what am I supposed to learn today? What, what, what am I what am I what's the message today? What am I supposed to learn? And um, usually it's the animals that carry that message for us. Mm -hmm at least for me anyways. No, I very true. Very true. And I don't know about for your, because we've checked in with each other, but since this whole COVID journey in the beginning for me, the animals are like, Oh, great. You're home. Then six months in, it was like, Oh, you're depressed. Go back to work. You're not going back to work. And then a good thing was people were adopting animals, but they didn't ask the animals at home how they felt about it. So there was a lot of this going on now at this circle that's still kind of going around. Lord right. knows when it's going to end. The animals are dealing with people going back to work and now they're having separation anxiety. So I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> So right. yeah, it's, it's been very interesting and the energies that are been coming in, you know, it just seems like things are moving faster and faster. So whatever they're manifesting is happening a lot quicker. And then always after the holidays, it's kind of a different, anybody that's works with animals on any level after the holidays, the animals are like, okay, the holidays are over. So they were like struggling not to manifest any more symptoms or suppressing things. And then at the end of the holidays, they're like, okay, I can't hold on anymore. And yeah. so that's the other part of my business, which I'm embracing because it's what I do. And I know that there is some spiritually other side, heaven, whatever we choose to call it. And so the animals are like, I just can't hang on anymore. 
Right. You know, and then the owners beat themselves up. Like, I didn't know this. I didn't know that. And so just as you brought up every animal, I think back like, oh, I wish I knew that then. Well, when you know better, you do better. And they are our greatest teachers. Correct. Exactly. And we just had that situation happen and mm. you helped us through that, you know? Mm. So that was one of the things that we we're so grateful for. We, you know, my animals managed to hang on. Mm. Three of them managed to hang on until mm. the day after Christmas. <laughs> and, and, the, and, the, and then, and then it all went downhill from there. Um, but we're here, we're through it. We're here, we're through it. And unfortunately, or fortunately, you know, like life is cyclical and none of us know when, you know, none of us are getting out alive and none of us know when it's the end of the road. Mm. And, and a lot of animals come back though. They do recycle, which I found very ish interesting as I've gone along this journey. That right. was one of the gals I spoke to yesterday, kind of like your scenario. She goes, oh, I went with a friend to look at rescue horses. <laughs> and then she right. said, I knew that was going to be a problem. I wasn't going to come home without something. And she said, right. sure enough, some soon as she walked up to like the whole pen of horses, this one horse went, oh, I've been looking for you. <laughs> he came right over. And of course, smart woman who ruined the rescue. Or, oh, he never goes up to anybody. That was the key. <laughs> And she said, and she goes, and I know this gal, she wasn't just shining me on, but her right. horse. And, and so then the owner of the rescue said, he probably won't get in the trailer. And she said, I think he will open the door. He walked right in like, okay, I'm good to go. You know? So. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Been there, been there, done that. Like I've, I've got three of my horses that way because I just went with a friend <laughs> Just mm -hmm. went with a friend who was yep. looking and the horses were like, oh, hello, I, here I am. And I went, but of course you've got to come home with me. Mm -hmm. What's the another potato chip, you know? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> well, the interesting thing is, is, um, you know, since our situation with Teague, so for those of you that don't know, we lost, we had a hound dog and unfortunately we lost him to cancer and he was diagnosed the day after Christmas, which was a Monday. And by that Friday, he was gone. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing was, is of course we had Lydia chat with him to make, to just see, we checked in with him to see where he was at and, and if he was ready to go and things like that. Okay. And, um, he, he was like, oh, I'll be coming back. But you know, I, I we have a little, uh, little dog right now. Well, we've got three little dogs, but uh, my newest addition, her name's Lola. And um, he really liked her. And he told us that he was going to come back. He was going to come back in a more portable form. So now, now I'm like, okay, where, where is he? <laughs> When you least expect it. Don't you have a Frenchie? I have a friend of mine that they can't keep their Frenchie anymore. And all of a sudden, there they are. So yeah. There they are. Co correct. 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 Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, it's so so fascinating. Um, and so like, again, we, you know, I love the animal commu communication aspect of of owning animals or I, I hate to use the word owning. I'm with you. Yeah. Pet you parents. Know, like, a lot of people like pet parents. Yes. Mm -hmm. Pet parents or caretaker. Yes. You yes. Know, yes. Like I, love they're that not, too. I don't own them. I own my car. Right. Yes, um, exactly. But can, can we de dive just a little deeper into the different, um, you had mentioned like more spiritually evolved. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, there are like basically two levels of souls that I found. Everybody's journey is different. The young souls are the ones that keep making the same mistake over and over again. They look at you like, what? Oh, I forgot about that. You're like, I just told you. And they live in the moment and they're very joyous. And so that's the energy that they bring. Then you have the old souls that are like, oh boy, what a day I've had keeping an eye on this one. And they're the ones that want to check in with you emotionally. When you look in their eyes, there's such a deepness. I mean, we as horse people, I love talking about a horse's eye, but uh, right. dynamically, physically, it's the same thing, but you're seeing their soul. And so yeah. an old soul is one that is a mentor, uh, a guardian, looks out for everybody else. 
um, and and not necessarily only in horse groups, certainly in dog groups as well. So and also a young soul doesn't understand time. So the the good thing about animals and the challenge about them is that they live in the moment. So they only want some time, some of them only want like five or ten minutes. But then you have the young souls that want twenty four hours a day, which we can't accomplish, right? But the Correct. old souls are happy just to check in with you for a few minutes and just send you that energy, and you know that they're there for you. And there are going to be times where maybe they started out being very in the back of your pack or your group. And then one day they step up because you're going through a trauma or you're helping another animal go through a trauma. And then you look back and go, oh, that's why he came into my life because he was just chilling for a while until he had that moment. And so, so the best thing about animals is they really teach us to stay in the moment. We're so busy. What happens two years from now or two months from now or what happened in the past and your animal's going, uh, uh, I'm right here. Um, right. And and I've been guilty of this, too, as my animals have gotten older. I got to see my horse. He's back in California. I live in Florida now, but I was back yeah. in California working and I got to visit with him. He's 29. And so he kind of saw me driving up in a different car and he kind of was like, oh, the old lady's back. You know, so he comes up to the fence and he goes, how you doing, girl? And I said, how you doing? He goes, me and the wife. He has a girlfriend that he hangs out with my friend's mayor. And he goes, yeah, me and the wife are having a good day. What's happening, you know, and he's yeah. 29. And so I was able to see with fresh eyes what's going on. And as soon as I started checking him internally, he looked at me like, oh, no, you're not doing that today. I'm doing fine. Turn off that, you know, ESP stuff is what he said to me. You know, I'm OK. I'll tell you if I'm having a problem. I said, amen, brother. OK, that's good. So, you know, so it's just it's and he just wanted to sit with me. We just sat and he also volunteered to do some exercise. He got up on the pedestal. He goes, look, I can still do this. My back's OK. And then he showed up and did a figure eight because he had I had taught all those things with him at Liberty, but he did it on his own. So that was kind of good. Um, good. And then he looked over and he goes, I'm getting kind of tired. I need a nap. I said, absolutely. So we actually just kind of sat under a tree and his girlfriend was there too. And we just kind of snoozed and it was really lovely. You know, a lot of people don't take that time to just sit with their dog, their cat. I get that we're busy and we have all these constraints, but those moments to me are so precious. And it reminds me to kind of shift my energy down and just appreciate being in nature because that's really what it's about. If you're going to have animals, they're, they're nature-ness, if that makes sense. So. Correct. Well, their ability, you know, they're quadrupeds. So yes, they, yes. Mm -hmm. I always like to explain it for the fact that their quadrupeds were bipeds. So they're always grounded or nearly all, they're Absolutely. way more grounded than we are. Totally. totally. Um, and so a lot of times it's just the, you know, they like us just being with them. But, but part of it is, is also us getting the benefit of getting becoming more grounded just by being in their energetic space. Absolutely. And horses open up their your pituitary gland. That's for people, their emotional, physical, spiritual awareness. Usually it's more women, but guys have it too. It's just maybe they haven't leaned into it. But that's right. one of the reasons why we're just naturally drawn besides the nurturing. You know, I was on the airplane coming back and somebody had mentioned horses. And we kind of just had a little bit of a chatter and somebody said, oh, my daughter wants a horse. And the two ladies and I both went, oh, it's good to lease for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, why? We're like, because it's an 1800 pound baby. You have to do everything. And he was like, oh, wow, I'm glad you're telling me all this stuff. And we're like, we're not just telling you to not get her around horses. And then one gal said, she'll never be interested in boys afterwards. He goes, okay, that's a plus. Like he was taking notes, you right. know. <laughs> right, right. And it exactly. teaches responsibility, but by the same token. But uh, yeah, yeah. So, oh, I love that. So I have a question. Um, so how do you, dis because we're all energetic, right? Like we, we all have energy bubbles. And so um, how do you decipher, like if you're going to talk to my horse, mm -hmm. how, and I go, this is my horse, Desafio, here's his picture. Mm -hmm. How do you decipher between my projection of him mm. and what he's actually oh that's a great question good question miss donna okay in the beginning it was hard for me to discern that and i think it's just like a muscle you just start to exercise but i just ask them first what do you want to give me first i always go to them first and it's usually and i know it's always their perception of the, what the situation is and then i would ask you a question you go 
oh, I thought it was because, and then I can ask them, you know, like let's use trailering. That's always a big issue for a lot of people. And we as horse people know, or we try to remember that it's going into a cave, but let's say it's a far-sighted horse. Like my horse is far-sighted for, so for him to get into just a trailer, it's blurry inside for him. So he does not want to be in there. He's very claustrophobic. And so I would start asking him, well, you know, do you have to have the hatch open so he can see out in the beginning? Or he was talking about the, the thing on the top that was like fluttering the skylight, sorry. And he was talking right. about that. So he gave me those kind of sensations. And in the beginning, you just have to, when I teach the class, which I taught at your house years ago, which is so fun, that's what helps to have everybody's feedback because everybody's going to come at it at a different angle, but all all of those pieces are part of the puzzle. So I would right. just say to try to answer that as effectively as possible is you have to go with your first impression and go with what you get and not what you don't get. That's something that Beer just really taught me because they only give you things in snippets. So going back to the trailer, some people think, oh, you're going you're gonna to see the whole huge trailer picture or, you know, what does your house look like? And the horse is going to give you, you know, the hallway and the paddocks and stuff. No, he may just give you his feeder because that's where he's focused. And everything right. else is oblivious, you know, and then give right. you the feeling of how he feels about that space. Some animals like people are claustrophobic, some are not. And, and then they will start giving you images of, well, this happened to me. So here's, here's another example. Yesterday, a gal asked me, she said, the only thing I can't do with my horse is put his blanket on. And he, he will actually turn and bite her. And she's like, I don't get it. It never happened with her. And so I asked him to start going back in his memory, which I, I kind of like give them the image of going back in time. And he said, one of the first times he had a blanket it on they left him alone for a few minutes and he flipped it over his head and he thought he was gonna die and she mm -hmm. goes i think i did remember the owner telling me that story so she's like well now what do we do with it and after all this time i've come up with different techniques that i've seen on videos and probably you so i told her how to do the eft or tapping where you start tapping on their shoulder bones and things like that so she tried two times and she right. texted me this morning and she said i actually was able to put the blanket on he didn't bite me she goes that's a plus um, and right. she said i'm going to keep tapping where because the old method that we still a lot of us still use because that's all we know is to flood them sacking them out but that doesn't teach them anything and then you have no. to bump up into and then sometimes it escalates right so this right. technique by tapping on a bone which works with people produces endorphins it's the same as if you walk up to your horse you want them licking their lips because you've given them a feel good so right. if anybody has problems like that i would look in there's all kinds of videos you can look up so that's how it's going to help her but that's how i ask the questions when did it happen does he have a bad memory to it yes because of that kind of reaction and now right. she has another tool to help out with and so hopefully it'll work out even better i love that that's that's that is absolutely awesome that is so awesome can they, so what's like your so like what's the most common thing that you get asked oh with horses i can't trim their ears lady <laughs> <laughs> or dogs and cats, I can't trim their nails. So in your notebook, if you remember Miss Donna, this is part of the class. Yes. This was given to me by Dr. Ed Hill, who's in heaven now, so I can thank him for this. It's an acupuncture chart and it, it has the whole part of the body. So when I rode around with him for two days, all he did was take surgical staples and put them in the different points of the ears for the whole body. And he would say to people, oh, they'll fall out in a couple of days. And that's how he did acupuncture, mind blowing. Same with dogs and cats. When you try to trim their nails, all right. the acupuncture points start in their feet. Right. So once people realize, oh, it's not just a test of wills and I can't do it. When you realize how energetic they are. And then on top of that with horses, they have all these energy rings, which you tap in with your photonic light torch. And as we teach people how to do that. So I was able, really blessed again, to be able to take the very first acupuncture course in United States in Los Angeles in 1980. And I was the only vet tech that was allowed because of my boss. And so I had to sign a waiver that I'd never put a needle in them. And then when I saw the torch, I was like, yay, <laughs> All I have to right. do is point light at them. Um, right? And I say to people, you don't even have to no acupuncture. You have the app. You look it on your phone and you go dot, dot, dot and do it all over just like right. I showed. So those are that's one of the main things. And then does my horse want to be retired or, you know, with horses, it's training, trailering, shoeing, equipment, all those. Does she want to have a baby? Um, yeah. I can't catch my horse. Some horses do it as a game. They're like, oh, you're going to come get me, you know? <laughs> so, and a lot of people don't know the strategies um, right. or, you know, why, why does he not want to do this? Or, you know, or the S word, the cell word. 
you know, wow. like when is it the wow. right time to sell them? Maybe you don't want to do, he doesn't want to do what you want to do anymore, or she doesn't want to do what you want to do anymore. Or right. when do I have to retire them? Do they want to be retired? You know, there are a lot of right. older horses that don't want to go and be retired in some pasture somewhere. They'd um, rather be in see, a barn that's I active. I had never thought, I had never thought of that because I've got mm -hmm. three of them that are mm -hmm. 28 and I, and the one we just, you know, she went through the Pirelli program and we, I, she's, 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 she's just been retired her whole life just because like she changed our life in so many ways. We're like, okay, you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. But my, and my other one got an injury. Mm -hmm. And so there's one of them that I'm still like, you know, she's 28. She looks fabulous. She's still running with my youngsters. And I keep looking at her going, you know, I bet I could still ride her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah some of them don't want to be retired they're like i'm bored out here what am i going to do i watch the planes go by a couple of hot air balloons like that's not that fun for me right exactly <laughs> exactly exactly and uh, of course yeah 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 it's yeah so it's just one of those things that you know i think well i mean even with us you know having access to you and whatnot it's just like sometimes we just forget you know mm. we forget the resources that we have so it's always a great reminder of going oh yeah oh yeah i need to i need to i need to set an appointment with lydia i need to have a chat with that one or that one or maybe a couple of them <laughs> the other thing i do is pre-purchase exams which i love doing so if oh. you called me up and said look i have a choice of three horses i'll put them in order i think it used to be in equus magazine if i'm remembering where they would give you like put the horses in order from a judge's perspective but i think of it like if you had just said okay this is what i want to do some liberty some trail riding and just have fun and then i would go through the three pictures or some people send me videos and also do a body scan so that you're not getting into some physical problems that you don't know right. because you know even a vet I, and i wanted a vet to have them checked but i want to make sure that your energy is right you know why get something that doesn't want to go on and do dressage but just wants to play or has had like no good reactions with women or men and how do we get over that so i right. do that in like one session and i thankfully i've had a lot of tests and i also do uh, litter evaluations like oh i want a show dog or oh i want a you know ah. a schutzen dog i talked to one last night that i hadn't heard from him in two years it was a police officer and he had a litter of 10 puppies we went through all the puppies and i i, I he goes i picked the one you picked he goes he's awesome and I said, well, that's great. I love that. Because if the dog or the animal doesn't have the drive to do it, right. no, nobody coming to me wants to force them. You know, I, I have pet, most pet lovers, certainly, but I have a lot of pet owners that are curious. And they're like, oh my goodness, I wouldn't want to make an animal do something if they're not happy. What's the joy in that? None. Right. So, right. so I do a lot of pre-purchase, which is fun too. Right. Every time I chat with you, it's just amazing. <laughs> I just... I just love it. So tell me about your online classes. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of fun. So I, instead of it being one whole day, like I did at your house, which I still love and doing, but because of COVID, we all had to pivot. So on Saturday, we do three hours, which is the three initial chapters different breeds and types of animals, how they generally communicate. Then we talk about discipline problems that have been different of all the things we've learned growing up, but really how the animals see discipline and then the actual communication techniques. And then on the second day, we just jump right in on Zoom platform and I'll say, here's Chewy. Here he is such and such an age. And I would wait for a few minutes and let people practice. And then I would validate everything. And then everyone in the class they have photographs of their animals. So everybody gets to work on each other's pets and that's for three hours. So it's in real time because yep. people have asked Beatrice also and myself, you know, and I do tape each of that particular seminar. So those people can go back and look at it, but to just sit at home and not have any interaction or you can't have your questions answered. I miss that. I miss that, you know, interaction, right. even just, you know, connecting with you. And so then the masterclass on Sunday is four hours, which I think the last two we did 18 animals we just like here's a bird here's oh. a horse you know and again those participants they get like almost two of their own animals too and i had some wow. gal who emailed me and she said well i just lost my last animal i said you can still take the class we've got plenty to practice on plenty you know right. and then you can come back so so yeah it's been amazing at first i wasn't sure but i had a gal from jerusalem 
somebody from cool. Dubai. I had someone who lived in Alaska. She goes, thank God you're doing this. I would have never been able to get to your classes because she's there all the time. She's part of this uh, park department. And she goes, I can't like take time to come to California to take a class. So it's been really interesting. But at first I was like, what if it doesn't relate? You know, it's just not a, it's not like just me talking to you. And so, but it's been a lot of fun. So the very first one, two of my clients, I had been to their house and stayed over and they heard my voice and the dogs were like trying to jump in the computer. It's Lydia, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you have cats that are like, oh, I'm on camera and they come up with their face and what do they do? Turn and show you their butt, which is a compliment, believe it or not, because that's a cat's vulnerable area. So if they show you their hiney, that's a, like a plus for you, but not for the camera. So people right? are like, okay, we don't need to see that on camera. Thank you very much. You know? Right. So it's been interesting to see how they react because I always make sure we have pictures in case someone's camera shy, but sure. yeah, we do have a few live ones that are very interactive. So it's been fun. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think there is something, I mean, we're all energetic creatures. So it's one thing like we project the energy on a pre-recording, but it's mm -hmm. not, it's not the same as us being there alive absolutely. and really connecting in with connecting in with each other's energy. Mm -hmm. So um, that that's, that's intense. That's so cool. So have you found like what you said, because different species, different breeds, different disciplines, like, so what would be like, let's talk about dogs for a minute. Like, what's the like for you? Like, what's the easiest breed for you to chat with? Uh, probably a Shisu because they were bred to be companion dogs and they just want to hang out with everybody. Um, the dog I was mentioning earlier was a Belgian Malinois. Those are the ones that you see on cops. And so a lot of people that don't know the breeds, which is fine, but they assume that they're mini German Shepherds and they're not. They're in the herding family, but they're right. also used in military. I've seen videos of, God bless them, here are all these guys with their big backpacks and their guns, but their dogs are strapped to the back with right. goggles and they jump out of a plane. And they are protecting our country. And so you have to have an animal that can handle the intensity of that. Wow. Um, we also had a dog in the class that works with the Coast Guard. It's a Newfoundland. And so they hover over people that are drowning and he jumps out of the helicopter and he jumps down and has a buoy in his mouth and he holds onto them until they can drop the basket down and pull the person up. So there, uh, I knew a lot of the dogs that were in 9-11 that were first starting to look for people in the rubble and how they started to get so de um, depressed because they were used to finding live people alive. Right. And so what right. some of the firefighters had to start doing is they had to start hiding so that the dog could have a live uh, capture and go, yay, you know, because they were getting so depressed. So when you realize wow. about what different animals do in their life and what kind of jobs they have and how dedicated they are to do it, uh, search right. and rescue dogs that look for kids out or, uh, that are hiking or people, you know, people that are right. out hiking and they get lost, that kind of stuff. So pretty right. amazing. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Their animals are incredible. Mm -hmm. So people always ask me about breeds. That's one of the sections. And when I, I'm a clinician, which I haven't done for a while, but I miss it. And so I always start off and I say, you know, you people with Arabians, you have very snobby horses and people are like, oh, you know, because Arabians things are, if you're not my person, I'm not talking to you. Okay. Right. So that's Correct. Arabian. Then you get to thoroughbreds and there's the drama Queens, right? They're like, I have to get a bath, get braided and get in the trailer. Oh my God. You know, and they know everything that's going on in the barn and they tell you who's getting into the feed room and everything. Then you get to warm bloods and they're the aristocrats. They're like, well, I do dressage, I jump, I fly in an airplane, and my poop doesn't stink. Okay, that's that's warm. <laughs> okay. Then you get to ponies, they're like, I've trained three people today. I've bucked three people off, and they go and mark it off on the bar and stall bar. And so it's like, okay, they're characters. Then people want to ask me about things like um, quarter horses, very yeah. laid back. It's like talking to a cowboy. They're like, well chased a couple of cows today and I pooped and I'm like, dude, I got 15 minutes. Come on. You know, you right, right. So can I, can I ask you about a breed? Sure. Yeah, sure. Because we, we, I've been, I've been, I have one and I've sort of been comparing notes with some of my other friends that have interactions. Um, mm. so PREs, Pura mm. Raza Española, yes, uh, yeah, yeah. also known as Andalusians. Mm -hmm. Very elegant. Uh, very particular about who they want to be around. They're kind of no nonsense. They don't like being made fun of, not that anybody, but you know, if they do something wrong, they're very uh, 
particular and introspective. Right. That's how I would categorize them. Yes. Okay. Very elegant. Very elegant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That sort of lines up with the, the, of course, uh, the elegant, of course, but um, the very particular who they want to be around. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, and they try not to wear their heart on your sleeve, but they do. And so they really want to interact with people that they can really compliment where, you know, God loves a quarter horse. They're like a golden retriever. I love quarter horses. They're, they get along with everybody. And if right. they don't, they'll do their own thing. You could be doing whatever you want. They're still going to keep doing their own thing. So they're a good first time horse for a lot of people. Like, right. uh, for example, Morgan. They were the first in the United States. They would plow the fields during the week and take the family to church. And so a right. lot of Morgans are very late. So, you know, that's where people like us, if somebody and I was on the airplane, they're like, what kind of horse should my daughter get? We both said quarter horse, you know, because they're so easy going. Um, right. And yet some of them are very intense. They do their job. They're cutting horses. They're reining horses. They're barrel horses. But they can pretty much help anybody. Um, right. And they'll take care. And not every horse wants to be a babysitter, right? So a lot of them are. Right. Then you get to like Clydesdales. People always ask me about the Budweiser Clydesdales and stuff. And they are truly like football players. So I was in Sarasota and I was up doing a huge weekend, kind of like you and I have done at different events and stuff. And I knew the Clydesdales were there. And one of the guys came over and he goes, hey, you helped me with my horse. He goes, we have a new wheel horse, the one that's closest to the carriage. And he's it's his first time. And I think he's having a tough time. Can you come talk to him? And I said, sure. So I go over there. And of course, those horses are immaculate there's not a dust on them at all and so right. his buddy was big ben and ben's like yeah i've been doing this i'll take i always break in the new ones he's just eating munch and he goes go talk to the youngster right okay so his name was danny boy so here's danny boy going oh my god i don't know if i could do this and you know he had been in the hitch and he had had really loose stools so they're like cleaning his socks and stuff because he had diarrhea and everything and then the guy said well look you know it takes us about an hour and a half to get them ready before they go into the um the stadium he said if you want to come out and check on him so i kind of watched looked at my watch so i go walking out there and here's been like half asleep going he could have been smoking a cigarette like yeah been there done that right and here's poor danny boy still shaking and then he let out the biggest fart and the, <laughs> the dalmatian who was up on the top going hey it smells like new jersey here what's happening you know like come on you know even the dalmatian was commenting about it but you know so ben's like i got him he'll be fine and once the music turned on ben's like okay we're going see you later lady and boom off they went you know into the auditorium it was amazing it was amazing so yeah they're like cool. football players and then people ask me about Mustangs. So here's what's so interesting about Mustangs, even for me, they emotionally decide whether or not they're going to be domesticated. Doesn't matter if you got them right out of the BLM or they've gone through a 90 day makeover. And I have right. two clients who have two Mustangs that they've rescued. They can't get near them. They've had them for five years. The vet comes out once a year and darts them to do their feet, their teeth and everything. And I, my heart breaks for her because this was her one dream to have these two Mustangs. And then there are other Mustangs that unless you picked up their mane and saw that they had a tattoo, you wouldn't even know they were a Mustang. They're so right. chill. So right. they actually emotionally decide if they're going to work with somebody. That's very right. fascinating to me too. So. Yeah, we. My trainer has she um has she got she did the ninety day Mustang makeover, mm -hmm. and um her Mustang stays with us, mm -hmm. and so she's very uh, she's very particular, very particular who she allows into her energetic space yep. and yep. Mm -hmm. who she allows um for. To touch her so you know like of course my my trainer she's got a great relationship with her um and i can halter her i can put a blanket on her i can do stuff with her mm -hmm. brian mm. she's like no 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 mm -hmm. and it, it and so it's so just fascinating because mm -hmm. they are they are they're completely different we could talk forever. It's been all, <laughs> it, it's been like 45 minutes or oh longer. Um, if people would like to get a hold of you for a reading, which by the way, I highly, highly recommend because Lydia's got 40 years of experience and she is just unbelievable off the charts. Um, it'll be the best money you've ever spent. Um, how do people find you? 
Okay, thank you. It's uh, www.lydialydiahibby.com. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. That's about it as far as social media. And everything's on the website. You just click the link. And then I have Tuesday and Wednesdays open hours. It's kind of like dialing a radio show. It gets a little crazy. But if people really want a Thursday or Friday evening appointment, I'm happy to do that as well. And if they're going to do a pre-purchase, then they don't have to send really a long video. It actually would be better if they gave me like uh, Dream Horse or wherever they go or if they've taken a photograph and they don't even have to have met the horse if they see it on an ad somewhere, which invariably that happens because I was, wow. I've been pre-internet, yeah. pre-holistic, you know? So right. I had people call me up in the beginning going, why am I looking at a horse in Kentucky when I live in California? I said, karmic, whatever. So right. I can do that as well, but I'd love to do that. Sure. Thank Yay. you. Yay. Yay. Awesome. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. me today. I absolutely love you um, and your work. You're amazing. And um, many blessings to you and, and you, go Brian. forth and mm -hmm. continue being a blessing to all the animals. Thank you. Thank you. You as well. You and Brian and your team. You've got a great team. Thank you. Thank you for watching this edition of Photonic Health Presents Health Made Simple. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications for all new Photonic Health videos.